Today we're learning how to use hub-to-hub -hub communication in LEGO Mindstorms to build this, a remote controlled robot arm. So don't go anywhere. G'day and welcome to another episode of Mr. Code's STEAM podcast where we talk about everything science and technology after school. Today we are going to look at one of the biggest requests from LEGO Robotics fans since the release of the LEGO Mindstorms Robot Inventor, uh, which is Daisy Chain Support. Uh, a lot of people, myself included, saw that although the new robotic system is generally better than the EV3, uh, not being able to network multiple hubs uh, look like a pretty significant drawback. Not only has daisy chaining returned to LEGO Robotics, but it is now better than ever before. It is now completely wireless, and it has the potential to communicate with an unlimited number of LEGO hubs. And the first question on everyone's mind is, Mr. Code, how does this work? To which I would say, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And skip forward to these timestamps where we will look at how to build this model and explain the code for the project. Let's start building.
The first thing we do is create a project called Robot Arm Transmitter, and this is the code for our controller. And you can access the extension blocks on the bottom left of the software. And as you can see, there are only three different types of blocks. A hub transmit signal block where you can create a custom uh, signal, a hub receives signal event block, and finally, a received signal value block. Now, when our transmitting starts, uh, it runs a constant loop where we are transmitting the base position 88 with motor A's position. And motor A is that uh, motor that is controlling the left and right movement of the robot. It is also sending elbow position 88, which is uh, connected to motor C, and this is the controlling the up and down motion, the vertical motion of the robot. We also have our left button uh, sending a signal to close the claw, and the right button sending a signal to open the claw. And the reason we have this magic number 88 at the end of our transmissions is to avoid interfering with another robot that is using the same value. So if you have a classroom full of multiple robots, then make sure that each robot has a unique transmission number. For the robot arm, we create a separate file called robot arm receiver. And first we initialize the robot arm by opening the claw and then we create a variable to keep track of whether the claw should be opening or closing, which called close claw, which is either a zero or a one. An infinite loop will uh, either open the claw or apply some constant force to close the claw. And to match up with the three transmitted values from the transmitter code, we need to make sure we have three receiver codes. The first one is close claw 88, which checks if we are receiving a button press from the transmitter. This will cause the claw to open or close. And base position 88 uh, receives the, uh, the horizontal rotation value of the robot arm to match the angle of the transmitter. And then finally, elbow position 88, which uh, adjusts the vertical rotation of the arm. When using hub to hub communication, it is important to keep track of your transmission values to make them unique for each communication pairing. And this is because transmissions made this way are not encrypted. Uh, and if you have several robots in a classroom, you can easily have problems with interference. And you can download my code in the description below to try this project out yourself. And although hub to hub communication is available in Mindstorms, as of this time, uh, there is no official Python solution to do the same project, but I'm sure this will be updated in a future video. So thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.